This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Sebastian Lelio. Is that correct? Right. Yes. Good enough, at least. Um, writer, director of Disobedience, um, which is the story of a woman who returns to a very religious community after the death of her father and sort of um, reconnects with the family and friends who sort of existed in there and the relationships that have changed in that time. Um, I wanted to start by talking about the first question that popped in my head in watching this movie, which was um, obviously there's a lot of very strong backstory and community information going on in this film. How do you approach a film like this so that you can sort of make the characters feel authentic and not a caricature? Because it seems like one of those things that like, if you don't treat it with enough care, it could just become this like, not, like not unfair representation of what this culture is like. And I think you do a very good job of creating a um, fair and just sort of presentation of all these characters, not just skewing towards one being a hero or villain oh, or something like that. Oh, uh, well, thank you. I, I guess uh, an important factor in that equation is the fact that we were trying to avoid making the community the villains, the, the bad guys, uh, the antagonistic force. Mm -hmm. uh, we were trying to grasp something slightly more complex than that. And then... Um, probably antagonism is really coming from within the characters themselves. So they are their, their own main obstacle to, to move on to the next level. Um, and, then, um, and then this feeling that you're watching, um, you know, people and not characters on screen probably, um, well, comes from the fact that we're working with great actors and actresses. Um, and probably because uh, I am very interested in, in, in the intersection between the character and the person that is interpreting them. Hmm. So I, I'm, interesting. I'm interested in Rachel Weisz as a person. Interpreting. Pretty phenomenal actress too. So that's a definitely that by, yeah, yeah. That happens to be <laughs> a great actress, but uh, but uh, but a very interesting and fascinating human being as well. You know, so how to use as much aspects as possible um, that, are, that she's bringing with her um, as part of the of what constitutes the character. And that's a whole way of shooting, you know, a whole morale of how to handle a set and uh, how to, you know, place the camera and how much space you give them, etc. Did you have to do research or did you rely on the source material like because it i mean i don't i don't even know how i would approach doing research on something like this if oh I no, had to, like... no no research was my middle name <laughs> <laughs> during the writing process and the and the shooting process i mean i am not jewish i am not british um <laughs> and so it was like how am i going to be able to find ways of accessing this you know and and um and yeah, we had several advisors and mm, consultants interesting. Okay. during the writing process, people from within the community that were very generous, uh, and then probably three or four. And then f during the um, filming process, um, pre-production and shooting, um, the, that number increased up to more than 10. Wow. So everyone in the team could call them you know, walk around the neighborhood with them hmm. and ask them everything because everything has a certain way of uh, being, you know, a rule, uh, a tradition, uh, a behavior. Everything is, um, we needed to get it right, all that cultural texture mm -hmm. in, order, in order to later on forget about it and concentrate on, I mean, the human beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that absolutely makes sense. Um, how did that sort of get influenced in terms of transitioning from the book that this was based on to a film as well? Because it's one of those things that, like, you know, I don't know how much difficulty is 
just making that transition from medium to medium. Like this scene works on a written page, but doesn't work in a film. Like how difficult was it sort of to, to take already a culture that you're not familiar with and then be like, okay, I can make this work on the screen. I can't make this work on the screen. Cause it feels like that's even another dimension that makes it challenging to sort of make into a project. Definitely it is another di dimension. Um, but the, 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 the novel is, um, it's beautifully written, and it's very literary, it's very novelistic. So they think and feel a lot, uh, which is bad news when it comes to adapting. Yeah, it doesn't translate to the screen quite It doesn't at all. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I mean, someone is, you know, eating some sweet, just like in Proust, you know, and it's like eight pages of yeah. things that, that triggers. Yeah. Um, but that's good news on the other hand, because then, then you have to find your own solution and your own translation. And, um, and that, in a certain way, is a, is a source of, for freedom, because, um, because we, we, had to, we had to find the visual uh, solutions for the conflicts that were expressed in the, in the novel. Even though the adaptation is not uh, too precise, you know, it's, it's more or less, it's based on the general idea of the dynamics right, of the characters, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it takes different directions. What was it like in terms of sort of creating the atmosphere amongst the, the actors? I mean, there's three core actors who are sort of the driving force in this movie. Did you have a sort of a strategy in terms of approaching their relationships between their characters? Like, would you keep Rachel Weisz separate from the other ones so that it seemed like there might be some distance when they came onto the set? Or I don't know, like, I'm just obviously spitballing things out here. Did, was there just something like, oh, you guys are pros, you can do whatever you want, I, I trust you guys? Or was there something strategic that you did in terms of creating the sort of proper, I don't know, tension or whatever you wanted on set with these actors? I think my main strategy is always building trust. You know, I mean, finding a way for for me to trust them and for them to trust me. And this is, I'm talking about all the films I've made. It's always the same. And, um, and, and I feel very grateful that it was the same in this case, again, you know, with these great actors. Um, because once you have that, uh, then you can go anywhere, you know, because, uh, because, um, because I need that daring attitude. Um, and, 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 and I think they need to know that I will take care of them. So w once you get there, then anything can happen. And, and that's great because you can, you, you're really cr creating I mean, I think that raises a very good point in terms of like this this film, I don't know what the proper term raw, it's very visceral at times, sort of like how how do you how do you establish that trust with them? Do you just sort of like bond with them during pre-production, or is there something that you really try to do that makes you be like, okay, you know, I realize you guys are Hollywood stars. You could be in, you know, like the Avengers or anything you wanted if you really wanted to, but I'm going to make you guys have great performances or, you know, do something that is, is going to make you feel safe in, in doing a film that is, is tough. It's, it is raw. It is, it's not a pretty like Hollywood yeah. glamour story, but it's, it's an interesting and powerful story because of that. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess uh, one of the reasons why we all felt attracted to this story and this project was precisely that, the fact that it was uh, stepping into dangerous territory and um, and we all wanted to to push the the limits a little bit and and to and to you know push each other uh, farther um, so so yes yeah, so we we could you know come out with something. Uh, that, that that's alive and that's um, vibrant and uh, so yeah I mean to answer your question I uh, I guess uh, they um, we were all willing that I didn't force anything um, and, and 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 we 
collectively created an, an atmosphere, especially during the shooting, that permitted that kind of uh, you know exploration or creativity, creativity yeah, or that's, that's yeah, yeah. Um, how do you think? Hearing about how diverse and uh, your background was as a filmmaker, you know, growing up in South America, living in Europe, making films in the U.S. How do you think all that sort of experience has impacted the way you sort of approach making films? Do you think that because you've had such diverse experiences, it, it, I mean, what ways do you think it's helped you? Are there ways it's hindered you? I mean, it seems fascinating to me, but I have no idea trying to step behind the camera and sort of approach it from that. Well, a fascinating thing thing aspect about cinema is that a anything uh, feeds the process. I mean, not only the arts, so to say, like the influences, the history of cinema, whatever tradition you are saluting with each film, but life, life itself, you know, like um, the cultures you're, you have, you have um, known, um, the amount of people you've been in touch with, the different realities you've been in touch with, all that is kind of like fuel for, mm. not only for creativity, but for, 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 for each film. You know, I, I feel like each film somehow condenses uh, the last three or four years mm. experiences. Somehow they are translated into that final shape. Mm -hmm. which in this case is disobedience, for example, you know, but I watched the film uh, two days ago after, after months um, and uh, I made an, another film in the meantime. So I was kind of like detached <laughs> wow, that's and I was like, who made that? <laughs> I mean, did I do that? Yeah. And I was uh, very, I've, I was very into, in, into the film, um, uh, like, like trapped by the film. And at the same time, it really spoke to me. That's, that's, that's a <laughs> profound experience that you're yeah, essentially yeah, making, like, oh. making a film for yourself later. Yeah, as a I, mean, I mean, I'm interested in these subjects. Like, I'm deeply interested in these subjects, you know. Um, but uh, I saw it from a, very, in a, from a very innocent perspective, at least for once. That's fascinating. Uh, I want to briefly, briefly talk about the ending without really going into any specifics so that, you know, no spoilers for people. How did you sort of set all on the ending as in as vague of terms, I guess, as you can, because as, as like an American, I guess I go into this film expecting like an extreme sort of reaction, but you kept it more in that sort of honest vein of like truth or whatever. Like in America, I guess we've grown up with too many action films or, you know, like somebody has got to murder somebody or die or something like that. Like, how do you sort of keep this film authentic to the end without sort of just like caving to, I don't know what, ever generic well the things that w the question is what is true to that story you know what what is um coherent and beautiful uh to happen within the boundaries that you yourself created for those characters in that specific script you know so how to betray that i mean there was already i mean you're it's like it's like it's like making music you're making some kind of you want a terrible note at the end of that exactly you don't want to <laughs> you want to keep it um evolving and yeah. progressing and towards unexpected directions but at the same time harmonic uh, and in that sense i guess um we were trying to to protect that very cool so the film is disobedience. Uh, people should check that. Was the other film you spoke about that you made in the meantime? Just oh, I, I made a new version of a film that I did called Gloria with uh, in Chile, but this time in, in LA with uh, Julian Moore. Okay, so not only do people have disobedience to look forward to, they can look forward to Gloria as well. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much. I wish you the best of luck with the film. Thank you. Uh, it's a fascinating film. I hope people check it out just because it is really um, and a culture that is so different from stuff that you see on the screen that I really think it's worth engaging with and expanding people's horizons. So uh, good luck with this film. I can't wait to see the next one. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.